Hey everybody, that load the SG here, back with another Mustang video, and today I'm going to show you how to remove your factory K member, and pretty much how to take apart your entire front suspension and gut it. Now, you might ask yourself, you know, what tools may I need for this job? And you know, just basic um, ratchets and wrenches and socket sets. Uh, you might want to make sure that you have deep impact sockets all the way up to about 24 mil. Breaker bar will help, pry bar will help, needle nose flathead, center punches, and some hammers because you will need some of these later to whack some of these parts out because they will be stuck in there. Okay, we just got the harness bar set up. So where we hook the chains up to um, actually is just directly right below the alternator right next to this pulley. We utilized one of the bolts and just stuck it straight through the chain. And then the same for the other side of the alternator, the bolt right there. Did you get that exhaust leak fixed? No. Two bolts on this back side of the caliper here. We're gonna see if we can break these with just a ratchet. Nah. Just gonna hang this right on this bucket where that GoPro is set. This rotor will just pop right out. We can just take it right off. Might as well. Now this process. For this side, it's completely the same as the other side. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move this top bushing to the end link on the sway bar. Let's move the nut and the bushing should come with it. Okay, now we need to take off this cotter pin holding in the, uh, the tie rod end. I just grabbed a half inch and an 18. Now what we're gonna do is a little trick. Flip this boy upside down. And then we're gonna make sure that the threads is flush with the top right here. And then take a hammer. One hour later. Okay, the tie rod end connections are now out on both sides. I had to whack at this for at least five to 10 minutes. We're gonna remove the strut. Very important that we do put a little bit of pressure on this control arm when we jack this up. The strut is the only thing uh, really holding the suspension up right now. And the spring in the back is holding the suspension down. So if I just drop this strut or remove it, the spring could come flying straight out, which would be a very bad uh, thing because you would get hurt. Preferably, you'd want a block of wood on this. I've got a 15th, 16th. Um, I'm gonna use the breaker bar just to start it out. It'll probably be a lot easier. You wanna grab a 7th, 8th wrench on the back side. Just like that, the knuckle and the strut are disconnected. Okay, I'm gonna pause this for a minute, not to confuse you. In these next two clips, uh, it's gonna be a little fast forward. It's gonna be for my GoPro, my camera died, and I was accidentally shooting in time-lapse mode of when I was removing the top bolt holding the strut in. So what you wanna do for this top bolt right here is just get a flathead, stick it in the grooves, and then get a wrench uh, around it 
and you know turn them turn them against each other and whatnot to loosen it up. When you get it uh, pretty loose, you will want to hold on to it because the strut will just drop as soon as it's you know unbolted. I got both of the struts removed. All right, we're gonna set the jack down ever so slightly, not super quickly. This is my first time actually doing any of this, so I wanted to be very cautious as to how I took it. Lock the wheel. Should just take one turn, you'll know it's locked. All right, hopefully your uh, battery terminal setup isn't as bummy as mine, or with the steering wheel locked, we can unconnect the battery. That's in a new terminal, but this car never runs anyway, so. Okay, now sliding up underneath the car here, if you come to where the driver's side exhaust is on the manifold, right here is the steering rack connecting to the column. So we're going to go ahead and disconnect this bolt right here, and then we're going to slide it on out. Okay, we're just going to leave that like that until we get the actual steering rack out. That's what we're going to do next. We're going to remove the steering rack now. There's two bolts holding it in. One right here, one on the other side. They're both 18s. Okay, so we got the two nuts off the front steering rack. Bolts right here, one on this right side, and one on this left side. Bolts holding in the steering rack out. Now we're gonna take a pry bar and just lightly uh, pry it out of there. How many buckets am I gonna need for this job? Yes. Now we're gonna remove the control arm. It's gonna be held in by the bolts right in here. And then on the outside edges right here. Inside is a big 24 millimeter. And then the outside is a 22. So we've got this front bolt out, or well, I wouldn't say front, but towards the front of the car. And then we gotta move on this rear one right here. But before we do that, there's two bolts holding in this rear mount right here. There are 15 mil, we're gonna have to remove those real quick. Perfect. Just like that, our control arm is out. Now we're gonna remove the engine mount, 21 mil. Go up here through the control arm where it was. Through this slot right here, that's where that's sitting right there. Go ahead and do yourself a favor, grab an extension.
And this is the same process for both sides. Okay, we're gonna slide this transmission jack underneath here. Uh, we're just gonna put it right underneath where the brace is. Got the K-member supported now. Okay, so now we're gonna remove the upper frame mount. There's four bolts on each side, so eight total. Um, there's gonna be two up here that are holding in, and then two here, and the other one is right over here. We're gonna need to get two ratchets on here to hold it. Top one is a 21 mil. Bottom one's down here, those are 18s. very confused as to why this is still in there even though there's nothing that was so weird check these threads the threads on it are perfect I guess when you get to these upper frame mounts, if it doesn't come out, just take a center punch, stick it in there. See if this drops straight out. Okay, so there must be some sort of angle or something in there, rust maybe. We got one out, so let's do the other now. Okay, I just removed the other side. Uh, you can see that the K number is completely loose now at this point. Now all I gotta do is lower it down. So you're going down now? Yeah. yeah. Alright. Perfect tool for this right there. That's what I was saying. And that's a lot better than Jack because you're right there. Look at that, you got her out. Yeah. If you've made it to the end of the video, that either means that one, you didn't get mad and you sticked with it and you have this same progress. And I really hope you guys do. I really hope this video helped you guys. Again, thank you so much for watching. I hope this helps. Now, with my old K-member out, I can install this tubular K-member. And the benefits of a tubular K-member over the stock one is stock one weighs a ton and the tubular one is going to save me about 50 to i think 70 pounds just on the camo and that's not going to be including any of the other suspension parts i'm replacing so thank you guys for watching comment down below if this helped you out or what you would like to see next um because i'm going pretty in depth with this project build so thank you guys for watching peace out and i'll see you guys in the next one <laughs>